my best advice to pass it spin up a vm and start managing your server i won't lie when i say there isn't a single day when i don't use the skills from the lpic exam as a devops engineer hello so if you are here i assume you want to pass lpic one examination from Linux Professional Institute and in my view it is one of the most useful IT certification for anyone that works in DevOps, Cloud or really in the Linux administration domain. Today we'll discuss firstly the experience with the exam, how difficult it was, how many questions I got, what is the passing score and all of the technicalities related to the examination. Secondly I will provide you with some strategies and hints that can help you excel your uh, learnings. Thirdly, I have prepared some uh, mock-up questions, five mock-up questions with the explanations so you can assess the difficulty level of LPIC 1 examination. And last but not least, we'll discuss whether it's worth or not taking the LPIC 1 examination. Let's go. Part one, the exam itself. So in order to be certified, you need to pass two exams, 101 and 102. So each of them is a 90 minute test with a 60 multiple choice and fill in the blank questions. Scoring of LPI is ranked on a scale from uh, 200 to 800 with a passing score of 500. So more or less you need half in order to be uh, successful. The validity period is five years unless you retake or achieve higher level. When we look at the bigger picture, LPIC is really the first certification from in the Linux Professional Institute roadmap. There are also LPIC 2 and LPIC 3 as a higher level certification for a bit more advanced users in the Linux space. However, if you are also completely new to Linux, there is also Linux Essential exam that really contains the basics of Linux uh, system. I recommend it to all of the newcomers. It's very easy, very pleasant, and there are a lot of good materials in the curriculum that can help you begin with uh, Linux. I also made a video some time ago about this specific certification you can check it out the link is in the description but now let's talk a bit also about the LPIC one exam how difficult it really was i would say that it really depends on how much experience with linux you really have because the real difficulty in this exam is really a wide array of a really different various topics so let me explain you have to learn domains such as for example system administration package management processes file system but also networking security and the topics that I would say that are not that much useful in the daily work, such as, for example, emails or uh, printers, how to set up the printer with Linux, I don't use it that much. Not everything will be useful for you, but as you can hear, there are many different domains that you need to at least understand at the very basic level in order to pass the exam. I would also like to pay attention to some specific topics like, for example, systemd, uh, shell scripting, um, for example, managing users and groups. And I would like to point out that these are utterly important skills if you want to succeed as a DevOps or cloud engineer. And I won't lie when I say there isn't a single day when I don't use the skills from the LPIC exam as a DevOps engineer. So you can imagine how really useful the skills in the material really are in the daily job. The curriculum isn't really deep, but it is quite broad. And here really is the difficulty to remember many things about many different topics. Part two, materials and hints to pass. So I came up with the few strategies that can help you to excel your learning. My best advice to pass it, spin up a VM and start managing your server. Use virtual box or cloud instances, such as for example, AWS or Linode and start practicing Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS or OpenSUSE to cover different package managers. Second hint is to start working with daily comments. For example, file management with LS, CP, MF for process control like a PS, stop, kill and other relevant comments. Try to also train some networking related commands such as for example ping, traceroute, netstat, IP, SS or Nmap. 
and of course security. It's a very vital part in the exam and also in the daily work environment. Try to understand file permissions with the change mode and change on. SSH keys exchange, firewall basics, how does the sticky bit works and also try to understand the overall management of the users and the, for example, root access. Another hint is that there is also completely free of charge book from uh, LPI that is available on their website where authors go through each of the domain and explains everything in a really, really great way. I strongly recommend to use it completely free of charge is for both exam 101 and 102. You have all the theoretical explanations, code snippets, practical exercises so it's definitely worth to look at and lastly i really recommend you to test with the practice tests that are available online and in particular on udemy i made one of the sets it's a 300 questions available on udemy where i go through all of the domains providing both practical and theoretical examples for the linux professional institute it is six full-length practice exams that really mimic the real exam structure. They are both multiple choice and fill in the blank type of questions, just like at the exam. The link is in the description if you are interested. And now we can move on to the five mock-up questions that I took from my sets. And if you would like to have access to full plus 300 questions that are on Udemy, you can go and just check the link in the description. Part three, mock-up questions. So all of the questions that you see are from my set on Udemy. So the first question is, you got email that the new team member cannot log into the production server. The error that he got is permission 0644 for the private key are to open. So we have four options here. We can move in first option, we can move the private key. In the second option, we can change mode to 777. We can, in the option number three, we can uh, change own it and in the option number four we can change mode it to 600 the private key the correct answer is number four because changing the permission of the private key to 600 really ensures that the file is only readable and writable by the owner of the file which is the correct approach uh, for securing the private key because again we're talking here about the private key not the public key in the ssh key exchange which is a usual type of authentication when we need to reach a production server. Question number two is the fill, fill in the blank type of question. So here, here we need to put the correct comment into the, into the question. So the question goes, to ensure a process continues after the terminal session is closed, you can use the something command that detaches the process from the terminal session. And of course, the correct answer here is, no hub the no hub command is really used to run the processes in the background and detach them from the terminal session and using no hub no hub really ensures that the process continues even after the user logs out question number three you are working as a DevOps administrator on a server where you need to update outdated reference in the Etsy, Nginx, Nginx conf. We need to replace the old domain that is referenced multiple times in the file with the new domain and which of the VI or Vim automation you would use in order to replace old domain with the new domain and here we have some few options i'm not going to go that much into the details the correct way to replace or to automate the replacement in vi is the option number two comment the percent as old domain slash new domain slash g in VI will or Vim will replace all of the occurrence of the old domain with the new domain in entire file let's move on now to the question number four so you are attempting to unmount a file system on a Linux server, but you encounter the following error message. Unmount 
mount data target is busy. What is the most likely reason for this error and how you can resolve it? I'm not going to read all of the answers because that would just take too long, but the correct answer in this specific question is answer number one. So basically the file system is being used by the active process or user. So the error message target, target is busy typically indicates that the file system is currently in use by the active process or user. And last but not least, question number five. As a system administrator, you need to find all lines in a file that end with the string success. Which regular expression would you use? And here, I think this is quite straightforward. So in order to find the um, words backwards or some characters in the backwards, we just usually use the dollar character at the end of the uh, word that we are looking for. So here the correct answer will be answer number four. The regular expression success dollar um, matches the lines that ends with the string success, which is the correct pattern in use to use in this case to find all of the lines that ends with success in the file. Final thoughts. Is LPIC1 really worth it? In my view, absolutely. If you are serious about the DevOps cloud or Linux administration career, LPIC1 is fantastic, fantastic investment. It is well organized and the skills that you gain are really essential in the real world IT environment on when or when you're looking for a job. So if you want to be 100 prepared to take it, just click uh, the link to my Udemy course and we can start learning today. Thank you.